You're watching Hegarai TV, Rhode Island's public access channel. Welcome everybody to the Four Corners, brought to you by the Official Wrestling Museum. We are your host. I am Angel, and I'm joined by the Official Wrestling Museum's Hall of Famer, Low Life. And we are here this week for our Four Corners for what we think is the best gimmicks in the history of professional wrestling. Yeah. Now, can we pick ourselves? Well, you know what? That's not a bad. I didn't even think of that, but that's not yeah. a bad. Uh, it's not oh, a bad choice there, you know. Yeah. Well, it was a pretty pretty good gimmick. It was a good gimmick. You know, it I, was. I, I think it is. Um, yeah. I didn't include myself, but it's not a bad idea. But I'm not. I'm gonna pick other things. So you're gonna pick other things. You're yeah. not gonna give yourself a big head. No, That's I, nice of you. I'll say low life was a good gimmick. But it uh, was, in all yeah. honesty, not because you're here. The low life character was an absolute tremendous character that you developed. And I had still some help. To you know, I always, you know, I don't ever like to say it was just me. There was a lot of people who did put some ideas in and stuff. I mean, the original concept I did come in the name, but people would throw things out there and I would try different things. So yeah. even to this day, people will throw something out and I'm like, I like that. So it's, you know, it, it's not just me. I And I'm not a credit stealer, but um, yeah, it was a pretty good idea, which if people don't really know what it is, that Will Life was a welfare recipient, um, and he cheats the system. He cheats to win. He cheats to get by in life. He brought that into wrestling. Um, he always accompanied by his monthly supply of government issued cheese. Sometimes that cheese helps him win. Um, he was a former TV champion, and that was a fun thing to do, carrying the TV around. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it I mean, was definitely something very magical. It was something that people could relate to. It, most of the time, you were supposed to be a heel, and you got over. Yeah. Um, and because it's fun, you know. To go twenty years later for July 29th, and you guys, you and your tag partner, ended up doing a one-on-one, -on -one and you get over so well. Yeah. You know what I mean? In and, an area yeah. that it's really not based for welfare. You know that what we were in. It, it wasn't because because Low Life said it was, <laughs> and uh, you know, um, the Low Life character was you know just table you'll, today. You'll hear, yeah, it was like wobbly. the tenth time low, already. The low I just sat from down. Low Life's house. <laughs> so um, yeah, the Low Life. You know, they say that the best characters are the ones of yourself. Just yep. turn that dial up, and honestly, Low Life was. I mean, I I would just laugh as I mean, I was myself, and I would go out, I would laugh, I would insult the crowd they would laugh and yep. and you can't forget the cheese yeah i mean the, the cheese was over lots I mean, some, of cheese like sometimes that cheese would get a huge pop yeah you know and um you know it got to the point back in the day when i would have little kids and they were making homemade low life shirts yeah you know it's, so it's, it's pretty, pretty cool, cool. You know, yeah they said it, you know it's and <clears throat> when i came back and did the july 29th show i worried about okay is this character gonna have the same um reaction from people and am I are they gonna understand the block of cheese to the point where I almost didn't bring the cheese. Oh, I would have been so yeah, disappointed in you if there was no cheese. Right. I, I, I had to, to bring store. it and you know what though? <laughs> Older people got the cheese, younger kids didn't might not have gotten it, but they would ask what the cheese is and their parents might explain it. Or um you know, like a little kid would say to me, hey, what's the cheese for? And as a little life, I'd say, ask your mother. She knows. Or ask your father. He knows all about it. You know, and just yep. insult people. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's always going to be a fun character. So. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, let's get into our... I don't think we need to explain it. I think people get the show now. Yeah. We pick something to throw into a corner. Yep. 
This week, you know, usually we say it might not be the best or worst or whatever. This week, it is the best. We That's what we think. designed it. So if you're picking four of your best or favorite gimmicks. Of all time? Yeah, anywhere, minus us. Minus us. Uh, minus us, or maybe even guys we work with, like uh, okay. our, okay. We're picking like main level, main, main level roster. guys, okay. Yeah, who, who are you putting in the first corner? The first corner, Goldust. Goldust? Goldust. Okay, that's a pretty good one. I mean, yeah. Goldust you know, was... That character was so well developed. Um, <clears throat> I remember going to the Providence Civic Center when it was called that, and what he was doing to the pole, for a lumberjack match wasn't allowed to be said on this network right here. Um, but he he was always on with his character and you always believed into him. Um, Marlena, he didn't even really need her at all. I remember um, he had the, um, so like the, a good thing, a, a thing about a great gimmick is that it, it, it can evolve. Right. And when he first started, he was originally supposed to be an Oscar trophy. Yep. That's what he yep. was. And he had the Usher. Yeah. Eventually he got Marlena. But like you said, he didn't need Marlena because he went on with Luna. And he didn't need anyone with nope. him. Uh, God, I remember when he first came out and I'm like, I know who that is, but I don't know. Who is it? It took me a couple weeks to realize it was Dustin Rhodes. Yep. But yeah, I mean, Goldust is a solid pick for a great gimmick. Yeah. Um, the theme song was awesome. And it always got better. It yeah. never got bad. It always it, got better. It evolved. It evolved. Yep. It, you know, he he did the you know they would call him androgynous is what the word they would yeah. use, which as a kid you're like you don't know what that means. No. You just know what you think the character. You try to is. go to a dictionary you're like okay how do I sound this? Up? And he comes in he has that immediate. Um, I, I can't even really call it a few with Razor Ramon because Razor wouldn't work him, but he had that immediate interaction with Razor. Yeah. And then that didn't happen. Then you think of the with Ahmed Johnson. And when he kissed him in the back, remember? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yep. Um, Goldust, yep. uh, Dustin Rhodes <clears throat> is a solid worker. Probably I've said, like, no, he wouldn't be on my top five guys of all time, but he would be that guy. Like, if you could say, who's that worker that you think is, not, I don't want to say underrated, but that guy who is, he's always there, he's constant. Yeah. He, most, maybe, should be more, I don't want to say underappreciated, but should be more appreciated. Mm -hmm. Dustin Rhodes is that guy. He worked that character a little differently than how he would work at Dustin Rhodes. Yeah. So Goldust definitely is a, is a solid pick. Um, the, like I said, theme song was great when he changed it up with Luna, yep. changed the character. Then he did the artist formerly known as Goldust. Cool. Yeah, that then was crazy. The Forever Unchained. Yep. To the point where that character was so good that he couldn't do anything else. Like he went and did the Black Rain in yep. TNA, which was really bad. Well, and that was he, even he said a, he was a period of time right. that wasn't. He was not know, in shape. He was having personal issues. Yep. Uh, he went on and did the Seven character in WCW, yep. which for one night, which um, and even now he still paints half of his face. Yep. So it's just something that he became. Yep. You know. So yeah, Goldust is a solid pick. I, if I'm gonna pick best gimmicks ever, I mean, my first pick, I gotta go with The Undertaker. I mean, okay, okay. yeah, I mean, you think about 1990, Ted DiBiase, actually this is pretty cool. 1990, Ted DiBiase is gonna pick a mystery partner. He's feuding with Dusty Rhodes. I thought the mystery partner, because he had been on TV like twice, I thought the mystery partner was gonna be Dustin Rhodes. Who yep. Played out to become I remember Rhodes. you telling me yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, we've before. talked about that once before. I think probably just during Survivor yeah. Series. Yeah. So when it's The Undertaker, you're like, oh, what? Who's this? Because he's never been a character. And then you're watching it for a couple weeks and you're like, wait a minute, that's Mean Mark, I think. And then, and then like Suburban Commando comes out not too long after that. And you're like, wait, it's The Undertaker. So, but the, the Undertaker character itself, when it debuted with Brother Love, it's, it was pretty cool looking and you're like what is this then when they got Paul Bearer though that's when it clicked and yep. became so much better and that character for 30 years like just like all the stories they could tell with that character he was one of those characters that didn't need it never needed a belt even though he's won them didn't need the belt because that 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 character just did not need it and just the stories they could tell, and how and to take a a character of 
you know, was he a dead man? Was he, was he just a man, an undertaker? And, and to make him a baby face? I mean, you had to because the crowd almost was like, I guess you could kind of say was like kind of like when you're scared of something, you yep. want it on your side. And that's kind of what it was with The Undertaker, I think, a little. But he was yep. so cool. He had such a cool look. He's a big guy. He could work. His style. That's another thing with gimmicks Best that make a great gimmick. Can the wrestler work to that style of, of what true. that character is? Very For true. example, this is not on my list, surprisingly, but like Demolition. Um, B- Mass Superstar Billy D was more of a technical wrestler. Does Demolition and switches up his whole style, yep. you know? So, I, yeah, I have to throw Undertaker on. Plus, just that's, for longevity. Yeah, you know, that's a really good one. He, he didn't make my list. Wow, really? He didn't. I just want to say and, Kane would be an honorable mention yeah, because of that. And I would say also Paul Barrett, even though he wasn't a Yeah, wrestler, that whole contingent, yeah, really. because Paul was phenomenal with how he played Paul Barrett. Right. Um, what, that's the thing. Would Undertaker have left? La- and, you know, I kind of asked this about, like, in, off, um, in the... Um, Hot tag when we had a question about who the greatest manager was. Oh, yeah, yeah. Would Andre's heel turn have been as successful without Bobby Heenan? Would Undertaker have been as successful or would that character have gotten over as well with Paul with Brother Love as it did with Paul Bearer? I don't think so. I think it would have been okay, but I honestly think with Paul Bearer, it really it took the gimmick from where it could go to here to here, you know, from you know, Yeah, I think Paul Bearer definitely helped make that and I think that was the reason that it really didn't hit my favorite because it needed the assistance okay um nothing against Taker now if we're talking Taker my second pick some of that feud would take a mankind okay um you know I think interesting because gold dust and mankind we had a great feud with the Undertaker they did, so yeah. it's it's interesting we're picking <coughs> yep. guys that all kind of blend together yeah. um the mankind character in the boiler rooms, the ripping the hair, the talking, the mandible, every single aspect of that was nailed to a T perfectly. I would and like I think pain. it was because yeah. Mick Foley had the mind for it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and I, I don't think it would get any better than that. I, I know when he first came in and he was doing the vignettes in the, in the dungeon and stuff, and I was like, I, again, with Goldust, I was like, I know who that is. For, it took me like two weeks to go, oh, it's Cactus Jack. And to take a guy who already was very well established as Cactus Jack to make him come in as Mankind. Um, and then make you not want to sit there and go, oh, this is Cactus Jack. And not ever think of Cactus Jack yep. is, is pretty good on the, the performer who's doing the character. Not the character is great, but the performer as well. And then, you know, that character also evolved into... A, a whole different character, just like Goldust did. Yep. Just like even Undertaker did when he became the American Badass. Not much of a fan of that one, but um, for Mankind to become, you know, wear the, start wearing the suit, and just became a whole different character. Yep. But that character just went from here to here. Like, it tells a story, you know? Uh, Mankind, great. I mean, to first off, to come in and be that adversary for The Undertaker, and to be that guy who always had the Undertaker's number. Like, Undertaker didn't beat him, really, I don't think, until, like, Hell in the Cell. Yeah, um, it was a while, yeah, Undertaker, yeah. I mean, and then we talked about Paul Bearer uh, in that match at the Boiler Room Brawl, and Paul Bearer turned on Undertaker. Yeah. You know, it took that Mankind character to do that. So, yeah, Mankind, so these are pretty good picks. I have, so my next pick, I'm going to go with Kamala. I think that Kamala was such a good okay. character. Okay. Yeah, it's a little different time. I like it, it's I a, like it. It's a different time frame. You know, in the time of the 80s, they're starting to get all the bodybuilders. Kamala was a guy, I believed the character. I thought this was an Af- a guy from Africa. He couldn't speak, he was a savage. Like, yep. he, the way he would work, this, the way he would throw his chops, uh, slap his belly, the way he would look. You know, I, I just think, you know, I know a lot of people like Abdullah the Butcher, and people, some people can make maybe like kind of Abby and Kamala similar. I don't think they're similar. I no. think they have a similar look just because they're big, dark yeah, guys. Yeah, I think that's the only reason. Um, but yeah, I want to throw Kamala in there because I just feel that's like that's not a bad. Yeah, I want to feel like he. I feel like he played the character well. He could be someone that I could see kids being legit afraid of. You know. Yeah, and this is hard too because you really got to stop and think because that that was a really good one. 
I look at this in a couple, my, my next pick might not be to some, they might be like, well, you're saying you don't have Undertaker on it, but you're picking this person. Yeah, it's, but it's whatever you know what character I mean? you want, so right. whatever. I'm going to go with Doink the Clown. No, you know, and Doink the Clown was definitely an honorable mention for me if I didn't pick yet, it. Um, like we've talked heel, about heel, Doink. You had the face. You had multiple people playing it. You had, you know, Think, Wink, and Pink. You know <laughs> what I mean? Um, and it's one of the most played characters on the indie yeah. scene. Part, part of the pick I mean? is, like, for me, when I was going to say honorable mention, it gave so many guys work because yeah. on the indie scene, so many guys could do it. But exactly. that original heel doink, we had that maybe the first week on the hot tag. What did you think of the, heel, the yeah. doink character, heel or face? And we started really, that one took a while to answer because that heel doink was so good. It really, it really was. was. He nailed it to a T. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, the face doink was great. It, really it was good was, for what they it, wanted it to yeah. be, you know? But the heel doing, to turn, to go through emotions from mad to sad to happy and just to be able to keep that going so frequently in a ring, cameras on you, the lights are on you, crowds interacting, and to be able to play that so well. Yeah. He did a great job. And again, I think that plays to the person playing that character, Matt yep. Bourne. Great. I don't think he would have been a good babyface doink, even if he stayed around. I don't think so. As a heel doink, he was yeah. great. He threw himself into that character. Yeah, and um, he was smart, too. He didn't play the happy clown too long when he was switching yeah. from the personalities. I'm going to go, so originally going into this, I was like, I only got one character. But now as, I'm, as we talk, yeah, more just at popping in your head, yep. Um, another, another great gimmick, I think, was uh, Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase. I oh, really, right. yeah. Okay. I mean, when he came in, you're talking about Ted DiBiase was an established guy, um, you know, worked all over the place, um, was a possible candidate for NWA champion. I mean, he was a great wrestler, great, great wrestler. And then to bring him in, they said that this <clears> was, <throat> if Vince McMahon could be a wrestler, he would be this character. And then he comes in and immediately he's got the, the, ha -ha, the laugh. He, the look, like he looks the part, um, and, and then like, you know, this is a guy who, they, they, he came in, he went right to the top of the card with that yep. character. They made him like play that character 24 seven. Like how great was it, was it for this guy? He's eating at all the fine restaurants. He's getting limo rides. Yep. Meanwhile, everyone else is driving, yep. you know, in taxis. Five in the car yeah. and stuff. So, and then like, you know, he, the, the whole, where he bought the belt, such like, like in that, my childhood, like there's like two or three. That storyline is like the storyline that hooks you into wrestling, and for him to do that, and then he gets the belt. Technically, he was the champion, and then they're like, you know what? Let's. And I know the backstory with Macho Man and right. all that, but but you know, forget all that. He gets the million dollar title, uh, you know. So I, I do think there was peak time. I think once he did the Money Inc. thing, I think after a while it started to die yeah, out. Yeah, but even with Money Inc., it wasn't too bad. You know, you said something about, you know, he was a big name in NWA. It wasn't, a lot of people think, you know, 80s WWF is when people started getting put on the map. You know what I mean? Because that's the time we actually got to see these guys, got to introduce these guys. If you weren't getting, you know, the, the little channels to come in, you know, if you were lucky on channel like 23 or something, you know, with the snow and stuff. Or if, if you didn't have the, the ability to really dig in to see about different people or magazines, you started knowing people once WWF came around. And so Ted DiBiase, when he came in, he was something different because he was, wow, okay, yeah. this guy is something. You know, I mean, he can buy us to shut us up if he really wanted to. That was good. I think, too, like... When he went on to WCW, at first with the NWO, it made sense. Like, oh, this is the guy. I mean, the way they're originally playing it, this is the guy that's backing all these guys coming over because yeah. of the Million Dollar Man character. You felt like he had the money. Right. They they changed that up once they had Eric Bischoff in, and they really didn't need Ted DiBiase. And it kind of from there on, Ted DiBiase it was like the manager of the Steiners and stuff. That was the yeah. end of it. But really, I felt like. It was believable with Ted DiBiase being the, the backer behind the NWO. So. so if I'm going to go with my fourth pick, this is probably 
<clears throat> might be somebody that you might be thinking of, might not be thinking of. I personally think this person deserves to be in one of my corners because during the time frame, there was no gimmicks whatsoever. And he was set up to fail, and he got it over so well, and that's the hurricane. The hurricane? The hurricane. I mean, again, it's your pick, so. Yep. Um, you know what I mean? It definitely got over huge. He went over he, on The Rock. The Rock yep. came back and put him over. He had his back against the wall. Of all the characters to put on somebody, a superhero, and not only he got himself over, he got Rosie over, he got Molly Holly over with it, um, and he went a good, what, three, three and a half years solid, you know, pushing that character really well through. To be able to do that during a time frame where there wasn't no characters, that wasn't anything that people wanted to hear, and you would that break that. It's kind of like he was the odd truth back then, you know what I mean? Not so much in the comedy sense, but it was comedy because you had a superhero. I think that's what brought the character, and that's why I love the character so well, because he was able to do it during the time frame that characters weren't allowed no, to be. He started off as a joke. Yep. You know, and I thought, actually, I thought they even maybe didn't do it as well at first, because remember, at first he was doing the reporter, yep. Gregory Helms, and then he would wrestle as the Hurricane. And I don't feel like they hit on that. I felt like they could have done so much more with that as him being the reporter and then doing the Hurricane. Yep. They really didn't. I mean, I know he played the reporter every now and then, but they could have made it where he was like a backstage interviewer as Gregory Helms, I'm here reporting, and then be the Hurricane, you know? Yeah. And I don't feel like they did that to the potential. And then he would do like he'd go in the ring and he'd go off the top, he'd put his cape on, to the point where, as again, the character evolved. And then and the, the character got to the point where it got so over that The Rock came back, this is when he wasn't full time, and put him over. I, yep. I think it was on Raw. I don't know if it was a pay per view. I think it was on Raw. And, but still, that's, you know, that's the thing, that's a misconception with some people. They think maybe. Um, just going over on TV is less than going over, over in a pay-per-view. It's really not because more people are going to see that TV match. Mm -hmm. I remember Xbox saying, yeah, I'll put guys over on pay-per-view all day. I'm not losing on TV. And uh, the reason why is so many more of eyes see that. So exactly. for him to come back and put the hurricane over, I, I'm not going to knock your pick. Um, my fourth pick, actually, I, again, I picked, I'm going to go, it's a, it's a throwback. Uh, I, Sergeant Slaughter, I think. I okay. think, um, and you could kind of go, is it just the Sergeant Slaughter or is it the Army gimmick? Like, I, you know, it was, it's was it been redone, Sergeant Striker, as a matter Sergeant of fact. Sergeant Striker does it um, awesome. But Real Sergeant guy. Slaughter, I think, you know, at the time in the 80s, where we're doing the, the Cold War over there with Russia, you know, you had just gotten out of Vietnam years before. Uh, I know he started off as the heel drill sergeant, which works. And then turned babyface, going up against the Iron Sheik, um, in a time where Sergeant Slaughter rivaled with Hogan as far as top guy, you know. And then Slaughter, you know, I, it would have been interesting to see what, what happened with that because right. Slaughter then left. I think I think Slaughter was a good pick, you know. You well, know. when he came back and did the the heel Slaughter, yep. you know, still the same character. That, you know, I know people said that maybe it was in bad taste. A lot of people, I don't understand the hate for the character that some people say, like, oh, I don't like it. I well, thought it I was fantastic. I think it's because the G.I. Joe and playing off of that, and yeah. I think that's what it was. If we're talking honorable mentions, because you mentioned that earlier, yeah. Papa Shangle is a that great gimmick. Good. I mean, um, he played that. So I, we need to pick, because they're telling us okay. we're short yeah, on we're time. Up, yeah. um, what's our four corners? I Goldust, I'll put on there. All right. We can do Goldust. I say Goldust and Mankind, your two All picks right. there. I see that. Um, I would go with... I, I want to I wanna say, what do you think of Taker? I think Taker deserves a Yeah, we'll put, we can put Taker, and I wouldn't be... See, you had some good ones. I wouldn't be opposing Kamala. He really... He played the character really well, but then again... So the choices would be Doink, Hurricane... Kamala and Sergeant Slaughter. Yep. There if, should be one more. No, no, because we have Taker, yep. Mankind. Oh, do I have one more? There should be one more. We should write this down. Oh, I Million Dollar Man. Ted, yeah, Ted DiBiase. Okay. So. I don't know. I'm not just saying it because they're my picks. I, I would, I would go with either your picks over mine. Yeah. Because I would either mine go was for reasons. Yeah. Outside of it. Well, I would either, so I would either, if we're picking a final, yep. I would either go with Ted DiBiase or Sergeant Slaughter, and I would really? probably lean towards 
um, Ted DiBiase. As yeah, the, you know as what? The more we'll go with Ted DiBiase. My father liked him. All right. Yeah. So we, so got we have Goldust. Goldust. Mankind. Mankind. Undertaker. Undertaker and Ted, Ted DiBiase. DiBiase. So you have a movie star that's very bizarre. Uh, Andrew Rogers. Yes. <laughs> you have a... Dead man. Dead man. Million dollar man. A million dollar man and a deranged man. Right. Wow, that's, that's a pretty good four. And all the performers were tremendous. They really were. You know, all guys that stuck around for a long time, too. Yeah. So, so why don't you guys send us your top four of your favorite gimmicks of all time? Do you agree with Oz? Do you think we should have picked a different combination I think at that, the end? I think that, so I want to just clarify real quick. Like, yep. the reason why I wouldn't have said, like, a Stone Cold or a Hulk Hogan is because I feel like that's more of um, a characteristic more than yeah. a gimmick. Yeah, you know? same for like The Rock, yeah. like Shawn Michaels, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Bret Hart. Like I f- those right, are more I feel like, like those are more the people yeah. themselves. And then Tatanka is really another mention. Like he did that good. Tatanka? Yep. I, you know what I mean? He, he played the gimmick pretty good. See, like Jake the Snake would have been, a, I wouldn't have picked him as a gimmick. I don't exactly. F- you know? Yep. All right. Yeah. But yeah, no, they, that, that was a pretty fun show. Yeah. Um, make sure you guys tune in to all our episodes of Off the Ropes this week. Figures R Us, Hot Tag, Free Per View. Uh, we got a lot of really cool stuff coming up. Um, we're working on uh, having some special guests in the house for some upcoming events that they're going to be doing. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, more of our community outreach that we're going to be doing. Uh, we did get a lot of good response over last week's show um, for Off the Ropes, and uh, we got some list of where we're going to be coming out soon. Um, Memorial Day in North Providence. Uh, yeah. Make sure you guys come out. Um, we will be there. So if you see us, we take are the pictures. Main, we are the main event of that. We, we, we are. We're the clothes. We're so. the clothes all the time. The fire trucks are right behind us. Um, so make sure you guys see us. If you want free autographs, pictures, uh, we'll be there all day on Memorial Day in the parade. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to do afterwards or not. I'm not. They haven't told us yet. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys very much for tuning in to us. Um, we appreciate you guys. Uh, make sure you do the QR code on the screen. Did I say Q? Mm-hmm. Q? I, did, I said it right. Okay, yeah, yeah. I messed up before. Uh, make sure you guys scan that bad boy um, and help us make a National Pro Wrestling Day. It takes 10 seconds, totally free to do. Check out the official wrestlingmuseum.com for all your needs. And uh, you know what they say. Come back next week and see what we throw in the corner. See you guys. <laughs>